Hi there again, it's Jeff, your protopie expert answering your protopie questions. Today's question comes from Lisa. Lisa asks, I need help detecting a variable value from one scene and then displaying it on another scene. Great question, Lisa. The secret here is to use a multi-scene variable, and I'm going to show you exactly how to do that. In my pie here, I have two scenes. In the first scene, there is an input field, and if I preview this, I have the ability to type in my name. And when I tap go, it will take me to my second scene. And you can see there's these four dashes here. What I want to do is I want to build a greeting and I want to fill those four dashes with whatever was typed in that first scene. So let's set that up. First thing we need to do is we need a variable. And this is critical. So in our variables palette, which is bottom left, and usually it's closed by default, you'll just have to click it once. It opens it up and you can make a new one by pressing plus. Now, this is very important. For any previous demo I've shown you, we've just used the for this scene option because we've only had a single scene. But in this case, we want to use a variable in multiple scenes. We want to assign whatever's been typed in here in the first scene, and then we want to reuse it again in the second scene. So I need to say for all scenes. I'm going to pick that option. Let's name this name. And I need to configure this as text because I'm going to be typing in text. So I need this to be a text variable. Now I'd like to take whatever's been typed into this field and assign that to the name variable. So let's add a detect. And we're going to detect changes in the input fields text property. And whenever the text property changes on that field, detect will fire. And what we'd like to do is we'd like to assign whatever that is to the name variable. So I'm going to select the variable and I'm going to make a I'm going to make a formula here. And I need to use a formula. I need to choose the input field. And I'm going to press dot, which will give me a list of all of its properties. And I'm going to choose the text property. So anytime the text property of that input field changes, it's going to fire this detect. And the assign will take that text property and assign it to the name variable right here. So now when I preview this, I'm going to type in my name. And I'm going to tap go. We're going to the second scene. You can see we still have the four dashes here, but I'm going to show you something. If I turn on the debug, and that's if you hover over the variable and you click this little ladybug icon that's right here, you're going to see that you get the, uh, the variable shows up. And when I preview this and I type in my name here, right, you can see it says name and it says Jeff. And then if I tap go, you're going to see I still have Jeff in here, which means that this variable is now available in the second scene and any other scene that you might make as well. So let's use that in our second scene. Let's go to our second scene. In my start trigger here, I have a couple of things that do a little bit of a wavy animation for this hand icon here. Uh, in there, I'm going to use the text and I'm going to fill that into the text field here. So I'm going to use a text response and I'm going to use the greeting text layer because that's this one right here. And I need to use a formula because whenever you're using a variable in a text response, you need to use a formula. And I'm going to build it in pieces. So I'm going to tap the function or the, the formula button. And using quotes, I'm going to start with hi, comma, space, double quotes. This part of the text never changes. So we call this literal text when it is enclosed in quotes like this. Then I want to add the name variable. And I can do that with the plus character. And then I'm just going to type name. And I want to finish it with the exclamation point. So I'm going to do plus and again, literal text. So double quote, exclamation point, double quote. I'm going to say, okay. Now, when we go back to our first scene, let's preview this. I'm going to type in my name. I'm going to tap on go. And I said, hi, Jeff. Now, I don't know if you noticed that. Let me reset it. Pay attention to where the greeting shows up. You're going to notice there for a brief split second, you saw those dashes there. We'd like it such that we don't see those dashes right away. We need to make a very small change to the second scene. In the second scene, our start trigger is set to run after the jump. And, and in that case, our jump is an animation of the second scene sliding in from left to right. So this start trigger doesn't fire until that animation is done. We'd like it to start before the, the screen start uh, slides in. So instead, we're going to change this to start with jump. And now when we go back to scene one, and we preview this, and I tap go, 
you're going to see I have the Hi Jeff shows up right away, which is great. Now, one more thing I need to show you. I'm going to take this a little bit deeper. So if I run this and I say, Hi Jeff, and I press go, and I haven't called attention to this before, but I have a back button set up in here, and this takes me back to the first scene. So if I tap that, it takes me back to scene one. And let's say I change this to Lisa. Lisa asked the question, so we'll use Lisa's name. I'm going to tap go. It still says, hi, Jeff. Why is this happening? Now, the reason this is happening is because we are only using that variable in this text response in the start trigger. And it only will happen when the scene starts the very first time. So when we went back and forth a couple of times, it happened the first time because this, that was the first time we saw the second scene. So that scene was starting and therefore the start trigger fired. Uh, but we went back and then forward again, we weren't restarting the second scene. So in order to make this fire again, we're gonna need to restart the second scene each time we jump from scene one to scene two. So in scene one, Let's do that. In my jump here to scene two, I'm going to choose this option, reset the selected scene. So let's pick that. And now when we preview this, and I type in my name, say Jeff, we say go. It says, hi, Jeff. Let's go back and let's put in a different name. We'll say Lisa, say go. And it says, hi, Lisa. That's all working. However, there may be instances where you don't want to reset your scene. Maybe you want to leave it in the state that it was, and all you want to do is update that name. You can do that too. And we're going to, instead of using the start trigger for this, we're going to use the detect. And a neat thing about way, the way detect works on a multi-scene variable is it will detect changes in any scene from anywhere. So instead of using this text response in the, the start, I'm, instead I'm going to add a detect. And I'm going to detect changes in the name variable. And recall that this is a multi-scene variable, so it will detect changes anywhere, so from any scene. Even though we are using this in scene two, it will detect when there are changes made in scene one. And let's take this response and just drag it under this detect instead. So we're going to detect changes in name. And whenever there's a change, I'm going to update this text field. So now if I go back to scene one and I preview this, I'm going to put in Jeff, I'm going to tap go, and it says, hi, Jeff. Now if I tap back and let's put in Lisa, and I say go, it says, hi, Lisa. Oh, right, so we're still restarting the scene every time. We need to change that. Let's go back to scene one. And in our jump, we're going to turn off this reset. Now you'll notice that the hand animation was happening every single time we went to scene two. We'll know that the scene is not resetting is if we don't see the hand animation happen the second time. So let's preview this. Say go. It says hi, Jeff. Now if I go back, I should see the name update, but I shouldn't see the hand animation. There we go. So scene is not resetting, but the detect is working and it's picking up the name Lisa assigned to the name variable. And that is how you use multi-scene variables. Easy as pie. If you've run into a snag with one of your pies and you'd like to ask us for help, just check out the link in the description below. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.